Hi, and welcome to Church Online. It's great to be with you today. Last Sunday, we started back meeting face to face. If you didn't realize that, we had an amazing Sunday at Steel River and at Maitland where everyone gathered together and it was a great celebration. We had animals from Oakvale and we had a jumping castle and amazing things for kids. But most of all, we had worship with real singing. We loved hearing from the word and we just loved seeing people. Truly, people were loving getting back together. So I just want to say to you, if you haven't come back face to face yet and you are able to physically and you feel safe to, we would love to see you back. It is beautiful to be together. But wherever you are today joining in with us, we are now going to enter into a time of worship. And whether it's you by yourself or you with a group of people in any part of the world, you, the Holy Spirit is present and we are all together, the body of Christ all around the world. So let's have a time of worship. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus the name above every other Jesus, the only one who could ever see. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. My eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me mm-hmm. Jesus Jesus, the name above the only one you could ever see Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Holy and holy There is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes shaken we will not be shaken 
we will not be shaken. 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 And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust not be shaken Last Sunday we started our Advent series. Now Advent means it come, it's a period of waiting and in one way we are waiting for the coming of Jesus. We, we know that he's already come but we're anticipating his return to the world so there's three ways that Jesus comes to us one is in his birth at Christmas time one is when he comes it will come again in glory and now as he comes to us in our daily lives and as we go through this period of Advent we really want to focus on why Jesus came at Christmas and how we can give ourselves to him so that he can fill our lives every day and as he fill out, fills our lives every day we are transformed into his likeness and we become the people that he destined us to be he came he gave his life for us he died for our sins he rose again and because of that as we come and put our faith and trust in him he comes and fills us with his very being it's this extraordinary thing that happens to us that we can become like jesus you know, during this time that we've been in lockdown, which is actually four months now, which is such a long time, we have had so many people who are faithfully giving all the time. And your faithful giving has enabled us to keep doing so many of the things that have been happening around here. And you don't even see what they are most of the time. But we've had deliveries of Play-Doh and Profiteroles. We've had Granary Care doing extraordinary things. Last week, we had our VIPs Christmas high tea with about 120 people. We've had youth events, so many things that are gradually emerging again. And your generosity has actually enabled all these things to happen. So I just want to say thank you for that. And if you're not currently giving into our church and you would like to consider that, then ways to give are on the screen. And I would encourage you to do that. It's God's amazing way of enabling a church to grow, that we all play our small part and together we're able to see extraordinary things happen. Let's take a look at what's on. Hey church, my name is Scott and here's what's on at the Granary. Christmas Eve this year will be a whole church affair for the Granary with both Maitland and Steel River campuses coming together for a celebration on Christmas Eve. There will be only two services, a 4 p.m. and a 6 p.m. Uh, at the Steel River campus. And if you're a part of the Maitland community and haven't been to the Steel River campus yet, we warmly invite you to come and check it out on Christmas Eve. After the Christmas crazy rush has finished, there will be no services on Boxing Day and we'll instead be coming back together for a single service at Maitland and Steel River on the 2nd of January and then we'll be back to regular services on the 9th of January. Now that we're back in person lots of our community activities are starting up again and a great one to be a part of is the prayer and devotion sessions which happen at Steel River on the first and third Sundays of each month. Now this is a wonderful community of people who pray for our church, for our ministries and the community around us. If you want any more information, please contact reception or email us at hello at granary.org.au. If you find yourself with any free time over the holidays and you know how to swing a paintbrush or even use an Allen key, Granary Care are looking for some volunteers to help out with some of the finishing touches on our 252 building on Maitland Road. It could be anything, a couple of hours, a day or, or any availability you have. If you're interested and available, contact Pastor Paul West or reception and let them know your availability. After a fantastic year of community and activities, youth and young adults, events have now wrapped for the year and are both on break until next year. 
So keep an eye out on socials um, during January for the dates to recommence. That's it for this week. If you want any more information, please go to the website, social media channels, or the reception desk. Have a wonderful week, church. Season's greetings, church. Have things been festive and celebratory for you? Or have you found things a little bit icy? I feel like coming out of lockdown that a lot of us are still getting back into the habit of social interaction, having fun. Well, we have Good King Wenceslas on its way and it is going to melt off all of the ice off you, off your friends, off this city, and it's going to bring the warmth of Christmas into the hearts of everyone who gets along to the Civic Theatre on the 22nd and the 23rd of December. Rehearsals are going swimmingly. And I want to ask you today, who are you going to bring along? Because, you know, we're doing marketing campaigns and all of that sort of thing. But the main vision that we have is that the people of our church take ownership of this and actually think, who can I invite along to the celebration? Because this is the perfect way into the journey of faith for a lot of people. That's been their experience in in the past of experiencing church, experiencing the true message of Christ and Christmas. And that's why we do these shows. So I don't want you to miss this opportunity. It's two days only for performances. Who can you invite? Think about it right now. Uh, get your phone out and text them. Now you can send them the invite to the Facebook link for the event, or you can just directly send them the, uh, the link to the Civic Theatre website where they can get tickets, or you can be so bold as to go and buy some tickets for them as a gift and say, hey, I'd love you to come along to this production. We've got the details on the screen for you to do that. So I don't want you to miss this opportunity because church, we're all getting behind it. You know, we've got lots of people in the show, behind the scenes, but you, the part you can play is inviting people along and making sure that you don't miss out on this awesome celebration. Good King Wenceslas, it is going to melt some ice this Christmas. So Christmas is coming. Someone asked me once uh, what, ty- what date we were going to be having our Christmas Eve services. And I said, it's always on the 24th of December, the 24th of December. So what we're doing this year, like we do every year, is that we celebrate Christmas Eve rather than gathering together on Christmas Day. One of the reasons we love to do that is we start this entire Christmas season with a time of worship magnifying Jesus. We come, as our theme is at the moment, we come and adore him. We do that first and then we go off and have all the celebrations. Some of you will have family traditions, particularly if you have a European background of celebrating on Christmas Eve. That's why we have services at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. So this year we are inviting all our Maitland congregation to come and join us at Steel River. Some of you haven't even been here yet, so please come down and see what Steel River is like. 4 p.m. And 6 p.m., they're going to be beautiful celebrations of the birth of Jesus and we all get to adore him. And I would encourage you with whatever you do this Christmas, make sure you take time to stop to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who came and gave his life for you, that you could know him and you could have eternal life. Make that a priority on your calendar. So then in the new year, 2nd of January, we're having one service in the morning. And then on the 9th of January, we are back to normal with all our services at Steel River and at Maitland. So we look forward to seeing you and seeing all that God has planned for us in January as we move into a new year, hopefully with no lockdowns and back to church as we've known it. We are going to move now into a time of prayer. I encourage you to be still. There's something amazing about coming before the Lord and being still. And being still is not just being still physically, it's being still in your heart and your mind as well. So let's take a moment to be still, just to close your eyes, be in a comfortable position and just meditate on the incredible love of the Lord that we're celebrating at Christmas. Let all your cares and worries go and just allow him to reveal his love to you. Let me read from John 1, 9 and 11, where it says, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Let's make sure that we receive him and pray this with me. In this season of darkness, awaiting the light of Christ, I confess any specific ways in which I've failed to receive, recognize or respond to you in my life today, Lord. Let's take a moment to allow God to search your heart for any ways that you have failed to receive him or respond to him and allow his light to fill you.
God of grace, thank you that when I confess my sins, you are faithful and just, forgiving and purifying me from all unrighteousness. I receive your forgiveness now. And the Lord says to you in Isaiah 59, 21, My spirit who is on you will not depart from you, and my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips from this time on and forever, says the Lord. Let's just reflect on this beautiful, the beautiful words from this hymn from 19th century France. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains he shall break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we, raise we. let all within us praise his holy name. God of this Advent season, my soul rests in you, and I trust now that your Son who came at Christmas will come again in glory. Amen. is a bit loud, isn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> Earlier this year, I turned 50 and I got some gift cards. So I did something that I've not done before. I went and bought some headphones and I'm wearing those headphones right now, as you can probably tell. <laughs> Um, and I bought some headphones, it was great, really good quality headphones, um, and uh, they were 50% off, I used my gift cards, blessed out of my socks. So most mornings, week mornings, I get up six o'clock, put on my headphones now, put on some worship music, and I go off for a prayer walk. So um, the first couple of times I had these headphones, 
I was walking up our street. I'm heading up towards the university. That's where I live and where I where I go prayer walking. And as I'm walking up our street, the strangest thing is happening. Every few seconds, there's a sound coming through my headphones that just says lost connection, lost connection. And then it'd be a few seconds pause and then lost connection. And I get up to the end of the street and it would stop. But the puzzling thing about this was that the music was still playing. So uh, the music was connected through my phone and was functioning how it should have been, some great praise and worship songs. But over the top of that was this lost connection, lost connection. Uh, and so I'm in this dilemma of um, my, my headphones are trying to tell me that I've lost connection with the source of music, but the music is playing. So what am I to do? Or maybe I was a bit loud then um, because they're noise cancelling as well. So I love them. So I'm in this dilemma of thinking, what, what, what do I do? I'm getting these two conflicting, uh, two conflicting pieces of information. And often when that happens, we find ourselves, when there's two conflicting pieces of messages, we find ourselves uh, confused. Um, maybe uh, I wonder whether you've had at any point in your life two conflicting pieces of information. If you've got a spouse or a partner, you may have experienced this. You come home uh, and the body language is mm, a little bit standoffish and you ask your spouse how they're going and they, they utter this um, very dangerous word, fine. Mm. You know right now that you are dealing with two conflicting messages. Um, when they say fine, mm, they say they're fine, but all the body language would indicate they're not. You know that you're getting two conflicting messages. Or maybe you might have somebody who says to you, do whatever you want. You know right there that that is not what they mean. You've got two conflicting messages. All the body language is saying, you better not do whatever you want. Uh, but the words are saying, do whatever you want. Maybe you have been, uh, maybe you've been uh, friend zoned by someone. You've been put in a friend zone, uh, but that person is quite codependent on you. So you've got these two messages going on. And of course, whenever you've got two conflicting messages, confusion is the result of that. And today I just want to think about this whole idea of two conflicting messages causing confusion around this idea of Advent and the first Christmas. We are well into Advent for 2021 uh, and we're just looking at some of different aspects of, um, of Advent. And today I'm looking at this idea of lost connection within the first Christmas, helping us to understand Advent today. So the first Christmas was a situation in history where there was two conflicting messages around how God was interacting with humanity. And let's look at these today. Now, you may have heard this phrase uh, many times, um, the idea that between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there's about 400 years of history. And you may have heard someone say, whether it was a scholar or maybe you've read a commentary or something, somebody who might have heard a preacher say this, they might talk about this idea of 400 silent years. 400 years where God didn't speak to people. There was no prophets coming. There was no, um, there was no books. We know that there's lots of writings during this time, but that, that writing didn't actually stack up against the, the true works that actually made it into the Bible. So there's this idea of one message that God is not speaking or he's silent to humanity. Um, and it's a pretty well thought through thing now that people generally in the Christian uh, history understand it to be the so. But what I want to just think about today is that there was a conflicting message in the Word of God around what potentially was also happening at the same time. So you've got 400 silent years, but also some amazing things happening where some characters in the New Testament were experiencing this incredibly deep connection with God. So let's explore that. We're, in, uh, we're going to look at Luke chapter 2, verse 25 to 40 today. And look at, this, look at these two characters of Simeon and Anna. And we'll discover that they're actually in the midst of this silent time in a deep connection with the Holy Spirit. So let me just read uh, together. If you've got your Bible with you right now, um, you can read along as well. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout. 
He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought the child Jesus to him for what was a custom that the law required, that was um, circumcision, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The, the child's father and mother marveled at what had been said about him. And Simeon blessed him and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that all be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and the sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, at the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She lived with her husband 70 years after her marriage. And then when she was a widow until she was 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, prayer and fasting. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke to about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Then Mary and Joseph had done everything required by the law of the Lord. They returned to Galilee, to their own town, Nazareth. And as the child grew and became strong, he was filled with wisdom and grace of God was on him. So there's a couple of things happening in this passage, which when you contrast it with this idea of 40, 400 years of God not speaking, no new, no new uh, prophets, no new um, revelations through scripture, you sort of think, what is going on? Um, but there's some really exciting things happening in that midst right now. A couple of things you'll notice in the text and I encourage you to look at is that um, it's said of Simeon in Luke's text that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Think about this for a moment. We're, we're still years away from Pentecost. We, we're in fact maybe 33 years away from Pentecost. And we understand in the Christian scriptures and especially in Luke's writing that it was something that was yet to come. Yet, here is Simeon um, filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Luke knew what he was writing about. He wrote Acts as well. So he, he knew what it looked like for the Spirit to be filling someone. And he says of Simeon, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's interesting, this is long before even Christ was born. We're in day eight now of Christ being born, but describes him of being like this for a long time. That's interesting. The second interesting thing is it says in verse 26, the Holy Spirit revealed to him. So not only was he filled with the Holy Spirit, um, the Holy Spirit was actually speaking to him and revealing things to him. Talk about a contrast between this idea of 400 years of silence. This is amazing. There's this man who, who the Holy Spirit's speaking to and saying um, the Christ is to come. And not only that, it was leading him moment by moment. In verse 27, it says the Holy Spirit led him. Um, it says, moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple court. So he's actually hearing the voice of the Spirit in the midst of a time frame we would say, God is silent. And I find this really interesting. And then there's Anna. And these two stories are put together for a purpose to, get, to help us to understand that even though as the Christ came, there, that, that the Holy Spirit had been moving and speaking to some Annas in the temple. She's actually been uh, widowed for, well, some texts say uh, about 65 years, but depends on how you understand the Greek. It could have been up to 84 years. So of that 400 years, there's this lady for 84 years had been coming to the temple and praying and fasting. And there's this sense of the two stories together. She's been hearing the Holy Spirit spirit and moving in prayer and fasting and, 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 and seeking God. This is, this is amazing. But um, it, it's amazing because there's this supposed loss connection between God and mankind. And yet the music is still playing. And Simeon's hearing the music and Anna's hearing the music. And yet it's almost like into the headphones is lost connection, lost connection, lost connection. And I find this actually fascinating. Um, and I wonder whether as we come out of a COVID lockdown, whether for some of us, um, that 400 years of silence, it feels a little bit, has felt a little bit the same as what a COVID lockdown has. 
And there's these two competing messages. And I just want to really encourage us today to think through these two conflicting messages. Because the music has always been playing. And of course, when I say the music there, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Always been playing. And yet, uh, so often we think, oh, lost connection, lost connection, lost connection. But the truth is that the music's still playing. So, while some were saying silence, um, God has been saying, I'm still speaking. And in fact, I'm not just going to speak to Simeon, and I'm not just going to speak to Anna. I'm actually going to speak once and for all for humanity by bringing the Christ child into the world. What an incredible thing that um, God would continue to play his music for humanity in the form of Christ coming to earth. Um, I know uh, lately some people have been saying, look, this COVID time uh, is just accelerating the death of the church. Um, the church is finished. But I think um, as those who want to say lost connection would say the church is finished, I think the music would want to say to us that the church is just getting started again. I think the lost connection would want to say to us that the church is closed. But I think the music would want to say to us that we're open for business. I think the uh, lost connection would want to say the church is asleep. But I think the message that the music would say to us today is that we are still wide awake. And so my challenge to us today is this, that there is uh, competing voices in your head and in my headphones that will try and bring confusion. But the truth is that God has always been speaking. His music has always been playing and he's looking for people to tune into it. And I think one of the things that he's wanted to say to us as we come out of uh, lockdown periods and we and we think about the new year and some of us feel a, a tired and asleep, uh, he want to say, stir yourselves to wake up. Because even though it's been true that church life has been difficult, there are still some who are wide awake and doing better than ever before. And I think he would want to speak over us today, this idea of even in the midst of 400 years of supposed silence, he was speaking to Simeon and to Anna, and he wants to speak to us in every single circumstance. Well, once I got in my walking to the top of the hill and went over the hill, I don't know what happened, but that voice of loss connection stopped and it didn't happen again. The music played and I worshipped. And I think that's a little bit of a metaphor for how God wants to work in us today. The loss connection time has now finished. And it's a time for the church worldwide to awake. There are evangelistic opportunities like we've never experienced before, and we're right on the threshold of them. We need to throw off everything that would say that the church is asleep and allow the, the sleeping giant to arise afresh and say, we're not going to be people of the lost connection. We're going to be people like Anna and like Simeon, who even 70, 80 years before the Spirit came, were living in this destiny of hearing the Spirit and being led by the Spirit. Can I encourage you wherever you are today to throw off every form of sleep? These are some of the best days for the church ever. There are places across the planet right now, even in the Western church, where there is a hunger that this COVID time has created. And, and God is calling people into his kingdom. And my encouragement to you today is, will you be part of seeing a great move of God even today in the midst of people saying the connection is lost and the church is asleep? God bless you today, love you, and uh, allow every form of sleep to be thrown off the church as we awaken to a new day. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for sharing with us. Please make sure that whatever God spoke to you through Matt's message today, you write it down or you share it with someone. It's such a profound thing when God speaks to you. So make sure you take it seriously and do something with whatever he spoke to you about this week. Next week, we're back online or we're face to face, so make sure you plan for that and plan for Christmas Eve, either 4 p.m. or 6 p.m. It's just going to be a beautiful celebration that you won't want to miss. And make sure you go online now, Civic Theatre, and book your tickets for Good King Wenceslas on the 22nd and the 23rd of December. We'll see you soon. And I will build my life your love it is 
a firm foundation.